political discourse of this Lok Sabha election has been most vituperative, to say the least, with both sides abusing and mudslinging each other. Thanks for joining us. I'm Harsha Subramaniam. And today, the question we are asking is, has the Election Commission done enough to enforce the model code of conduct, both in letter and in spirit? Joining us are two former Election Commissioners, Chief Election Commissioners at that, O.P. Rawat and T.S. Krishnamurti. Gentlemen, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Mr. Krishnamurti, I'll begin this conversation with you. There has been a perception that the Election Commission has been partisan and cowed down by political pressures. Has, is that perception justified? The election commission has always been subject to such criticism in every election. Uh, we have had number of complaints right, um, you know, right from the start of the election, and whenever a decision is taken which is not favourable to them, people will say that it is mm -hmm. partisan and so on. But as far as this year is concerned, I think all parties seem to be equally guilty of violating the moral code, mm. and. Uh, uh, election Commission is too small an organization to deal with too many complaints received like this. Mm. So it, uh, it is quite likely that uh, some people are aggrieved, that it is quite likely that they have not got the decision that they expected. Right. But I think we have to believe the constitutional authority goes by certain norms. Mm. It has certain uh, reasons for uh, taking decisions. But whether they have taken the decision quickly or whether they have given a reason or speaking order and all that, that may be debatable. Mm. But the question is, we have to trust our constitutional authority. Point taken, Mr. Krishnamurti. Mr. Rabat, same question to you. You know, some, somehow the perception is that, uh, that they've not been quick in taking decisions, that they've been seen as being uh, cowed down by political pressures. Uh, wh how do you think the Election Commission has behaved th through this course of these elections? I would largely ag agree to Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti's view. However, with slight difference, that in case the complaints of 1st April, 2nd April or 4th April could mm. have been disposed of mm. within reasonable time, say just two days, three days, then the impact would have been very different. Mm. When it took about uh, 25, 26 days, it, it really uh, created a different impression. Mm. And uh, mm. that should have been avoided. Okay. So, the, uh, so another point, thing is transparency. Sure. So the point whatever, you're making... Whatever the, order is passed on anything, mm. one has to bring those things, those facts in public domain immediately. Okay, timeliness and transparency are the two points you're making, Mr. Rawat. To be fair, yeah. in the yeah. Election Commission's defense, it has imposed curbs on hate speech uh, by, uh, by, by politicians across party lines. For example, it curbed campaigning of uh, Yogi Adityanath, Mayawati, uh, Pragya Thakur, Azam Khan, to name a few, and these are across party lines. The perception really has been built because is that they've been soft on the Prime Minister, on the BJP President and, and the sitting government. Uh, have you found its actions to be wanting? Mr. Rao. Actually, election commission. Sorry, uh, is it for Mr. Krishnamurti? No, it's for you, Mr. Rao. Okay. Uh, actually, election commission has been doing uh, excellent work. In fact, uh, I was reading about Nizamabad the story that 185 candidates and they could, uh, in time, arrange for M3 EVMs and conduct the poll. And even other uh, restrictions imposed uh, on violations of model code of conduct. Mm. Uh, in these particular cases, which are now becoming or snowballing into something which is uh, being lapped up by media mm. uh, to uh, punch uh, the election commission, mm. uh, it appears that a little better uh, could have been done. Okay. Mr. Krishnamurti, you know, what traditionally what has been the view of election commissions on, on, on sitting governments? They need to be treated like, treated like any other political campaigner, isn't it? Now, the, the key question I have is, uh, politicians don't seem to take the, the, the violations of model code very seriously because no stringent action is, is taken. Uh, is that I the crux of the issue? Uh, uh, no stringent action is taken. Mm. What I would say is, the election, the election commission actually tries to implement the model code of conduct. Mm. The model code of conduct is not a law, mm. and it has certain deficiencies. Mm. The words are debatable. For example, personal attacks, and then, for example, whether you are using the army or not. They're all debatable issues. Unfortunately, there's no clarity on such matters, mm. and people can have different perceptions. But election commission as a constitutional authority has certainly owed it to the people that what the decision they take, they pass a speaking order, they give reasons for it, and uh, indicate that they have no bias at all. Mm. The second point I want to make mention is that Election Commission is too small an organization, and it, ha it has its own limitations. 
apart from the need for electoral reforms which have been uh, need which have been the cry for so many years and election commission has been writing from time to time no party seems to be serious on improving on uh, bringing about these reforms mm. and unless and until uh, there is seriousness among the political parties which unfortunately is the weakest link in our democracy right i think this kind of situation will increase because the number of voters will increase the number of parties will increase and the number of hatred and violence cases will also increase uh, point taken again mr mr rawat you know what happens when the commission is faced with such issues well there have been reports that one commissioner dissented in the cases against the prime minister uh, how does the commission deal with such such situ situation is there a, is there a set process already in place actually in any matter where there is difference of opinion section 10 of uh, the related act applies and the majority decision uh, is uh, that prevails mm. uh, but in this particular case since the dissent the majority view nothing has been brought into public domain mm. so at times it appears that there is a smoke without fire mm. uh, whether there is any dissent nobody knows uh, what is the dissent nobody knows so unless all facts are in public domain we are just talking in the air mm. i have one final round of questioning gentlemen and since we have both the election commissioners here or the former election commissioners here uh, and this is about the considerable debate that we've seen over the use of electronic voting machines now they are also using vv vv pads now political parties wanted random physical verification of 50% of the booths in each constituency using the voter verified paper audit or the vv pad the supreme court rejected that proposal the election commission believes that the vv pad slips from one evm is in every constituency is good enough now we have seen political parties move a review petition of the supreme court uh my question to both you uh, gentlemen and perhaps mr rawat you can go first uh, is the existing system proposed by the e e election commission full proof that is one uh, vv pad or one evm constituency being checked is that good enough actually election commission had uh, given the responsibility to suggest uh, a sample for 99.99% uh, reliability mm. to indian statistical institute which is a pre premier institute of the country right. and uh, they had come up with a report that this uh, sample which is being used 4120 for the national election is much higher than whatever is required uh, what was uh, proposed uh, by them was 479 and uh, therefore election commission Uh, gave them certain uh, more aspects about this to deliberate and then submit a final report after that i was not there in uh, election commission but then the matter went to the supreme court and supreme court after viewing all reports after hearing from isi and all those things they came up with this five uh, polling stations in every legislative assembly constituency i think that should satisfy but if there is any doubt or suspicion in the mind of anyone then uh, it it devolves on the election commission to bring trust to bring their faith because ultimately election commission is working for uh, the faith and confidence of all the stakeholders mm. last word with you mr krishnamurthy and same question really is this is this full proof what the election commission is proposing and as all... mr rawat says does it maintain the confidence of the system i have always been saying that evms by themselves are most credible and there is no doubt mm. that it cannot be manipulated mm. but even so the political parties wanted some change they have got the vv pad now they have said they want 50% i am telling you that if the commission agrees for 50% they will say we want 100% mm. so it's very unfortunate that the political parties are not respecting the decision given by the supreme court mm. they want the supreme court to review it but maybe the supreme court will review it and we should learn the political parties should learn to accept the verdict of the supreme court and if they have any grievance they can give go back but they cannot be indulging in smearing campaign that you know electronic voting machines can be manipulated and it is very unfair on their part because when once they come to power or when once they get elected they will not have any grievance against the machines but when once they lose the political party start complaining this has been the uh, theme for the past maybe uh, 2004 when i was first time we introduced for parliamentary elections this has been the theme we have been seeing it it's very unfortunate that the political parties are not showing more maturity more relief uh, what is the responsibility in such matters
Gentlemen, we leave with them. Many thanks indeed for joining us. T.S. Krishnamurthy, Mr. O.P. Rawat, many thanks indeed for joining us thank on you. Bloomberg Quick. Thank you. Thank if you, you have been, much. thank you so much for watching.